Hi everyone, uh, my name is Kunal Daya. I am a first year PhD student in IIT Delhi and I will be presenting on extreme classification with level features. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, Shilpa Gopina, Yashodhya Prabhu and Dr. Manik Verma. So uh, first let's, let's have a look at uh, typical recommendation scenario uh, where we have some user and their user features. Also uh, we have some items or labels. Uh, for each user, we have some history that a user might, might have liked some item in the past that we are representing using the rating matrix R. Now the question comes is, how can we do better than this? Uh, one of the possible answer is that uh, we can use the label features. Uh, that is the information provided by the labels. Uh, to, uh, we can use that uh, it, while providing better recommendation. Uh, there hasn't been much, uh, much work in extreme classification setting uh, which make use of the label features. However, uh, there has been some work in uh, recommender system such as Matchbox uh, which make use of label features. But the main, main issue is that uh, those are no, not scalable to the level of extreme classification where we are uh, dealing with millions of the labels. So uh, I will be focusing on two fronts. First is that uh, our proposed approach is able to improve the performance in terms of uh, precision. And the other point is that it is also scalable to the million of the labels. <coughs> so uh, first, uh, let me give a brief overview of FastXML. Uh, because our uh, proposed classifier is an, an extension to FastXML. Uh, so FastXML is a hierarchical tree-based classifier which learns to partition the users at each, each node using only label features. Uh, for, a tip, uh, for a given user, uh, the prediction are uh, made at the leaf nodes, uh, where several trees can make a cumulative decision to give the final prediction. Uh, here is the optimization objective function for fast, fast XML, and we optimize this using alter, alternating minimization algorithm. So, uh, this is, uh, I will be referring uh, extreme multi-level classifier with level features at, as LFT XML for rest of my talk, which is a framework that integrate user preferences, uh, user, uh, user features, as well as item features. And uh, we will be dealing with warm start scenario that uh, we have some information about user preferences for each user. So uh, first, uh, let me talk about what item features are exactly. So, uh, Let's, uh, for each item, we extract word to vec features, uh, which is a, a string embedding techniques. So uh, let's say the user M might have liked uh, these four items in the past. So a linear combination of all these features, which is represented by the basket B, is a representation of the user M in the label, label space. So basically, uh, now for each user, we have two representations. Uh, one is the one in the user feature space, and uh, other in the label feature space. So, uh, to partition each user, uh, to partition the user into the left and right subtree, uh, we use information provided by both uh, both spaces, user space and the label uh, label space, uh, to make the decision that the, this user M should go to left partition or right partition. Uh, now let me explain the detail how we are actually partitioning at each node. So uh, the parti partitioning actually boils down to uh, learning uh, two hyperplanes, uh, one in the user space and other in, in the feature space. Uh, now uh, there are uh, many po possible variations in this uh, that we can uh, we can jointly learn these uh, sp uh, hyperplane at each, each node or we can learn them independently. So uh, in, in our approach, we are learning uh, both of these hyperplane uh, jointly. So uh, this is our optimization function. And I have highlighted the difference uh, in the green uh, from fast XML. So uh, this incorporates uh, label features. And the uh, same as fast XML, we also uh, use alternating minimization ap approach. Uh, to optimize uh, uh, LFT XML. So initially, we start with uh, random, uh, at, at each node, we randomly assign uh, user, uh, users to left and right partition. Then, uh, then we find a ranking for each partition. 
by fixing other parameters. Then we move on to re-rank. Uh, then we move on to repartition the users in the left and right uh, node uh, by fixing every other parameters. Then we learn the item item hyperplane and the uh, user hyperplane. So for this user, uh, for user F, we are uh, learning this. So uh, now let comes to the experiment section where, where I will I will be presenting results and uh, compare uh, compare that against the existing approach, uh, which involves uh, baseline classifiers from uh, recommender system settings as well as uh, extreme classifier which uh, don't make use of label features. So here are the data sets that we have used. We are uh, we have training points ranging from uh, 14k to 1.8 million and uh, labels ranging from 3k to uh, 0.5 million. So uh, as I explained earlier that uh, we are dealing with warm start scenario. To uh, simulate this in our experiment, uh, for test users we have revealed n percent of labels for uh, n percent of labels. So uh, we have done experiments for uh, revealing, by revealing 20 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent and 80 percent of the labels for uh, test users. So uh, to go over it again, uh, now we have user feature data, label feature data, uh, full training uh, matrix, and uh, n percent reveal label of the of test test uh, test users. So uh, first, let uh, let me talk about uh, is uh, using label features uh, actually making a difference. So here we are comparing uh, extreme classifier extreme classifier with label features against fast XML, which doesn't use label, fe uh, label features, only use uh, user features. So uh, here, as we can observe that uh, we are able to uh, improve accuracy up to 25%, 20%, and 18% in uh, P1, P3, and P5, respectively. And the uh, same trend is followed on uh, relatively larger, da uh, larger data sets, where we are achieving up to 10, 8, 7% improvement in precision. Uh, there has been uh, several approach, such as uh, uh, SVD++ and alternating uh, least square with weighted regression, uh, which are uh, a kind of uh, matrix completion approach. And uh, also, there are several ways to combine user features. One of them is uh, directly concatenating user features and item features and then uh, use uh, that as a single feature and uh, proceed forward. The other approach is to uh, learn two different, uh, two different trees, uh, one, one in the uh, user, hyper, uh, user space and other in the uh, label, hyper, uh, label space. So our, different, uh, our approach is different, different from this, uh, these as we are jointly learning uh, both hyperplane at each node. So, as we can observe from these results, that uh, our approach is uh, able to outperform these existing approaches. And the similar trend is followed uh, for these, these data sets also, which is Del Delicious Large, Amazing Cat, and uh, Wikipedia Large. Uh, now the next point uh, I wanted to talk about that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, there may be several combination uh, of optimizing uh, a user hyperplane and item hyperplane. One of them is that we do them ind independently. Another is that uh, we optimize them sequentially. So uh, as uh, we observed from our experiments that uh, uh, first optimizing item, uh, item hyperplane and then uh, user hyperplane is uh, best performing. And our intuition behind that is that uh, for test labels, uh, we are revealing uh, only some some part of uh, information. So optimizing NDCG uh, may induce some uh, noise in that, and uh, uh, item uh, 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 optimizing item item hyperplane first is uh, able to nullify some of the noise that was induced while optimizing NDCG. So uh, this is the comparison of uh, various variants. <clears throat> So as I mentioned earlier, the uh, variant three, which is basically uh, optimizing uh, item hyperplane first, and then user hyperplane is performing better. And the same trend is followed for uh, uh, 
other data sets also. Now the uh, second point I mentioned is that scalability. Uh, as we can observe here, these are results for uh, Urlex data set. Here we can observe that uh, it is performing uh, worse. It is performing worse than fast XML in terms, of, uh, in terms of training time as well as prediction time. But it is still it is scalable to large data sets. Uh, here are some qualitative results on uh, Wikipedia, da uh, Wikipedia data sets, uh, where uh, users uh, are a Wikipedia, uh, is a Wikipedia page. So the first first is actually a networking page, and uh, we have compared results of fast XML and uh, and LFT XML. So as we can observe here is that uh, for a networking page, a uh, fast XML is uh, predicting more generic or less re uh, relevant labels, while uh, LFT XML is predicting uh, terms such as uh, network, IP, which are more relevant uh, if we talk about uh, if we talk about in terms of human perception. Uh, same trend is uh, followed for uh, uh, this thermodynamics uh, page and third page also. So uh, to conclude our uh, approach, we proposed an uh, we propose a novel approach uh, which make use of uh, label features and uh, we also uh, uh, we also showed that uh, it is actually performing better than other possible uh, variations and other proposed approaches and the most important point is that uh, it is skill, uh, still scalable to large data sets that's it thank you We have time for one or two questions. I was wondering if uh, you said you, it makes a difference to first optimize for users, yeah. or is there a way to optimize jointly instead? Uh, sorry? Is there a way to optimize both jointly instead of deciding on one first and then the other one? Um, actually, not not in parallel. I mean huh. jointly. Jointly, we we haven't thought about that. But uh, we are thinking that optimizing first and then second is actually better than uh, optimizing jointly. Yeah, we might have to. That's think I, I didn't mean in parallel. I mean with a single loss that would do the two at the same time. Then we have to think okay. about uh, using a different optimization yeah. function. Of course, we have to think about that. We have time for one more question. If not, let's uh, thank the speaker again.